<laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Sound is okay? Okay, yes. Um, what a pleasure it is for me to be presenting today the performance concepts of the Forte Piano at Cap Mount. Before I begin, I want to introduce you very, uh, my wonderful TA, Hannah Park, for several years. Um, now she graduated DMA degree at Claremont Graduate University. And also another important person here, Curtis Borek. Um, he is the harpsichord builder and he uh, restored this forte piano for this conference. And uh, he supplied early keyboard instrument for orchestra, Southern California. Thank you, Curtis. Currently, I teach piano and forte piano at Claremont Graduate University. Although I began life as a pianist, practicing on the traditional modern piano, while at CGU, I became very involved in the unique beauty of the forte piano. This led me to believe that to give the piano teacher a perspective in how classic period compositions were heard during the period of time that they were composed. That playing or hearing the performance of them on a forte piano would be a major benefit to teaching these classic period pieces on the modern piano. Therefore, if a pianist is studying the works of C.P.E. Bach, Mozart, or early Beethoven, and plays them on a forte piano, the teacher and student will hear a very different performance sound. The classic period is roughly from the sons of J.S. Bach, the early 1700s to the eight, early 1800s. But there is a period of time from the early awakening of the classic period when the forte piano was king. Composers during the forte piano era dealt with a softer sound, lighter action, and a different emphasis on the overtones which are generated can lead a performer on the modern piano to possibly modify their approach when perfecting a keyboard piece from the era of the forte piano. I would like to explore this pedagogical direction by demonstrating on both the forte piano and the modern piano. Today, I will present three composers from the classic period. Johann Friedrich Dolles, Jr., 1746 to 1796. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, 1756 to 1791. And Leopold Kozelek, 1747 to 1818. I have these books from, I, um, I got this book from Boston Early Music Festival, and I found this, and I'm gonna play for you later. And this is Mozart, we all know. And Koselok Sonata is edited by um, Christopher Haggard. Mm -hmm. So later, I'm gonna talk about it and play for you. Of course, I um, realize that the investment of owning a forte piano is most often not possible. But with a today's access to traditional period recording, it is possible for the piano teacher to hear period recording of a classic period compositions and can gather ideas on sound and performance issues that can be moved over to the modern piano. 
the forte piano sound is not as powerful as the modern piano. However, it does have its own unique sound quality. Let me briefly discuss the differences and similarities found in the forte piano. Forte piano is the earliest version of the modern piano and was developed by the Italian harpsichord maker Bartolomeo Cristofori, who was employed by the Medici family of Florence. Forte piano keyboards were usually shorter than our standard 88 key pianos today. Most are only five or six octaves, and keys themselves on the early forte piano compared to our modern piano were shorter, as well as slightly narrower, so that large intervals were easily reached. The forte piano has thin leather covered hammers. It has a much lighter case instruction construction than the modern piano and does not have a metal frame or metal bracing. On many forte pianos, the pedals are controlled by the pianist's knee instead of pressure provided by the foot. These differences contribute to why the forte piano does not sound as rich or powerful as today's modern pianos. However, there is a unique quality, delicate quality, produced by the knee-powered pedals, particularly the left pedal on the forte piano. As a pianist, who is quite familiar with the unique features of the forte piano, in my opinion, it's much easier for me to articulate differences in sound and mood within a piece on the forte piano due to its more gentle sound. Sometimes the modern piano's tone is too powerful to articulate the soft, gentle components of the composer's work. With the forte piano, it is easier to express the ideas originally intended for the delicacy of a composition. I believe it is now time uh, to let you hear what I have been talking about. First, I would like to play the first movement from a Dole Sonata, number six. Johann Frederick Dolles Jr. received his musical education from his father. Himself a musician of high rank in Leipzig as a successor of the great Johann Sebastian Bach. Dolles was a child of his time and composed in the fashionable style, Galang style, fanciful, charming, witty, elegant, and a considerable challenge for the technical skills of the performer. I did recording as world premiere of this piece.
let me play the Dolis again, our modern piano. Do you think? Yeah, difference. Yes, I hope you heard a difference. to give um, any of additional information about Mozart and his importance. Now for a piece that is familiar to all of us, Mozart Sonata K333 in B flat major, second movement. My performance ideas were altered by the contrast between the two instruments.
recently, I had been offered the opportunity to record the complete 50 keyboard sonatas of Leopold Koselleck and knew that they should be recorded on the forte piano, which would be the instrument and sound that he had heard when he composed his sonatas. I finished recording all of Koselluk sonatas, 50 sonatas for Brilliant Classics in Holland. Koselluk as the foremost representative of Czech music in 18th century Vienna. He was noted as a composer, pianist, and keyboard teacher, and ranked above Haydn and Mozart during his lifetime. According to Christopher Hagut, Koseluk sonatas are, in the true sense, classics. That is to say, models for imitation and study and display to perfection precisely those features that theorists require of a sonata at the end of the 18th century. I was approached by Brilliant Classics to do the complete recordings of the 50 sonatas of Leopold Koseluk. I was very excited because they wanted the recordings to be on forte piano. The final project consisted of 12 CDs. Let's hear a part of Koseluk Sonata number 23 in C major. You can hear um, there is a certain delicate quality that the forte piano gives to this piece. After getting the chance to hear all of these three works performed on both a more modern instrument and one from the time period of these great composers,
it is clear that there is a change in delicate tone, altering the original delicacy of the piece when played on a modern piano. By performing these pieces as they were originally intended on the forte piano, it brings a more clear understanding of intention of the music and vision of the composer. When teaching these pieces to students, <clears throat> it is important that we emphasize the purpose of the pieces as seen by the composers of them. Therefore, there is a clear advantage to teaching music from this particular time period on a classical forte piano over a modern piano. It has been my pleasure to present the forte piano's value in teaching compositions of this early classic period to students. Thank you again for your time. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your cat mount. Any questions? Yes? So would you explain the function of the three D pedals? Yes, I um, um, we uh, I just mentioned about the knee pedals, but this instrument that Curtis brought today <coughs> has no knee pedal here. But Curtis will um, explain more pedals. <laughs> Forte pianos are not universal. They're, they were everyone was different from the other. This is an English style piano which was dramatically different than the Viennese style. There were basically the two types. And the Viennese style had the knee levers. They, were, they do the same thing as pedal. They usually lift the dampers. But the English piano, because um, even the harpsichords from the, that preceded the piano, um, had foot pedals to change the uh, stops, or uh, they were actually experimenting with volume of sound, and they would have shades they called Venetian swells that would open up when you stepped on a pedal to make it have a crescendo and decrescendo. So the the but the interesting thing about those pianos is they were significantly different. Yeah. And so each one was its own case, and when you have those different composers, they all had different pianos. But you know, the character, like what she was saying, was still more the same, that the pianos had more difference in the way the bass and the treble separated. They weren't so homogeneous. That all came later. But it, you know, it affected the way you play the music, and basically, it's like, when you play a modern piano, it's like a transcription for a, for a different instrument than the composer was used to. So you have to have that in mind. And if you have a, a basic idea about the, these pianos, and one of the, the biggest differences is the, they don't sustain as long. Well. So the composers you know, would have a huge chord that's supposed to die off like Beethoven when he starts something. But you can't do that on a modern piano. You have to do something else to get the sound to die away, because he could have mm -hmm. like a Pasatique sonata starts off mm -hmm. with a huge chord and then very quiet notes. Yeah. On this piano, you can do it exactly as Beethoven wrote it. But on the modern piano, you have to figure out how do I get the sound mm -hmm. to diminish. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's those kind of differences. That Thank you. Good. This piano is broad, broad. Yeah, this is a Broadwood piano Broadwood. made. It's Beethoven's period. In London, and it's exactly like the piano that uh, Beethoven had in his composing studio. Uh, but he had many pianos. And, and people were always bringing him pianos. And you know, about every three years, even the, the pianos were changing. So they were always something new, something different. Uh, you know, and, and they were giving them to, especially to a composer like Beethoven. And, and what's interesting to know, I mean, they've more recently discovered that Mozart, there's no evidence anywhere that Mozart's pianos or the, the pianos he liked 
had leather hammers, they actually were wooden hammered pianos. That's sort of a startling discovery. Because they have Mozart's actual piano, but somebody changed the, after Mozart died, they changed the hammers to leather coverings. So the, the first Viennese pianos had wooden. So it's, it's almost like the, a uh, lot more like a harpsichord. Right. And there is some recordings you can find like on YouTube and things, and, and the pianos actually sound really beautiful in the concertos, very crystalline, clear type of sound. Mm. Good question. Yes. The strings. Uh, is, somebody, is somebody manufacturing reproduction strings? Yeah, yeah. Them? So this, there was a guy in England actually who was restoring some pianos for a guy who had a wire factory. So he oh. said if you would manufacture the wire, you could restore your piano. So, so there's a guy named Malcolm Rose, in, mm. and I, so I restrung this. Mm. I bought this at a Sotheby's auction, and it had no strings, and it had, hadn't been played for a long time. The, the, if you see the top, it's all got all these circles, because it was used just to hold potted plants, and they watered them. <laughs> oh. Oh. But, I mean, wood holds up pretty well. And, and the entire piano was like the inside and everything was just jet black from soot and everything so that they, the coal burning in England. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask, um, where are you from? Are you from Southern California? Yeah, well, I'm basically grew up in San Diego. Okay. Yes, he is here. Moved to Los Angeles here. after college. You're in Claremont? Yes. yes I, I am. So, a, yes. so I was wondering if you were also in the Claremont area. Uh, well, I'm in downtown LA, my shop, but I, I met Jenny when she was a student at Claremont and I was taking care of the keyboard instruments there. Okay, thank you everyone.